Well, hello everyone, and here I am with a Lego Star Wars review, or kind of my last solo review. Well, for now. Well, last of the first wave, anyways. But, and this one is on the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon. So on the front of the large box, see, the Lego logo, Star Wars logo, the border for Solo, all the mini things included with it, Disney logo, uh, down that corner. And then picture of the set in action, like that shot in the trailer. And recommended ages 9 to 14, set number 75212, has 1,414 pieces. So pretty good amount for a non-UCS set. And then flip to the back. See it in a more park position, all the features and everything. And yeah. So now I'm move this over a bit. Oops. Hope you didn't see much of anything. And on to the booklet. See, same pictures on the front of the box, and it's the thick book style, like in the ideas line and whatnot. On the back, went on the online survey. All the pieces that come with the set. Add for Lego Life with the Kyle Ren one. Add for the Bill of Figures. Add for the Spring Wave of Sets. And the Mini Figs for each one. And the last building set, which is 201 pages of build. And so now on to the Mini Figs that are included with this. First of which is a Kessel Operations Droid. And this one's printing is quite good. It's similar to that of the C3PO's, but oh, whoops. But as for the face print of which, if it can focus, focus. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So as for the face printing. Which doesn't look like a face, but maybe it's like a scope eye or something. Uh, not sure about that. I guess we'll have to see in the film to know about that. And there is from the back with a good back head printing and good back torso printing. And yeah. And next one up is a DDBD. <laughs> kind of funny. But anyways. So as you see, it has the normal bow droid headpiece and also one of the cylinder pieces, but flipped upside down and has one of the T-bars and the older style Ninjago skeleton legs, but recolored, which is kind of good, which is good for mocking and whatnot. But at least kind of interesting how they made this one. And there's some back head printing and not much else. And now it's Kuwait Tall Sight. Uh, not sure how to say that. But as for this one's torso printing, done pretty goodly. But for the headpiece and face print of which, which is also quite good. But I think, but as, and a lot of us have known that LEGO has never done a Zuckus mini thing, like ever. And I think this is how they should do it. So. Lego, if you're watching this, please make Zuckus and do it like this. It would be awesome. And there's his face printing underneath it. And there he is from the back, but no double side face. But also the same exact uh, skirt, or I mean, cloak piece. Like the other ones. Or like what, uh, what's the name? Uh, Ferris off he did in the clone recent clone trooper battle pack and yeah and next up is Kira uh, which is a little bit different than the one in the uh, Han Solo's land speeder set but like different outfit good printing or torso printing but lack of like printing but still good holding a small pistol right there 
the same headpiece as that, but the hairpiece of which is a Lego Friends hairpiece, kind of rubberish and whatnot. But at least good to see it used in some other non Friends sets. And there she is from the back. Focus. And there's from the back and an all right double sided face. And then next up is the Adur Han Solo. Or Han himself. And as you see, this one's torso printing done pretty goodly. And so is the good light printing. And this of printing of which matches both the uh, Build a figure set of Han Solo and the Brickhead set of Han Solo. Like with the brown jacket and whatnot. And also the small pistol compared to the long pistol that the Build a figure one has. And there he is from the back with an alright double side face. And then next one is a newer form of Chewbacca. With as with a different kind of upper head piece or part there. Also long pistol and all. And here's compared to one of the recent or older ish Chewbacca's. Uh, so it's kind of a bit more long for the shoulders and all. Um, but like printing is kind of similar and whatnot. And also different so two different ammo belts compared to one. If anyone knows why this Chewbacca looks this way, tell in the comments. And there he is from the back. And last but not least is the new Lando Calrissian, played by Donald Glover in the film. And this one's torso printing and leg printing is just about good. It is really good. But also the like hairpiece, which is kind of similar to that of Finn's ones. But at least done a little different because Donald Glover is always kind of a bit like that. And also for the new cape piece, you might think it's two different pieces, but it's one whole piece. Well, if you buy this, if you get this one, you would understand. And so here he is from the back, and it's some slight and an all right double sided face. And, oh, whoops. On to the main attraction of which is the Castle Run Millennium Falcon itself. And as you see, quite a big set this is. Just about like some of the previous versions. Oh, whoops. Almost like some of the previous versions that there is. Because, see, there were a few different versions. Like, there was one in 2011 and 2015 with The Force Awakens, and then the big UCS versions, and now this version. But what's quite different than some of those is the, like, escape hatch piece here, and also the color scheme, white and some blue, compared to, like, gray and all. And, but as for the outer detailing, is, as you see, there's a satellite dish which is like down for some reason, but you can fold it up and it's on two Mixel ball joints like the Force Awakens version. And also like the Force Awakens version is in the front areas where you can press on these and it shoots the spring-loaded launchers, which is quite nice. So it's kind of like they modified the Force Awakens version and selling it as this one. And if you didn't bother getting any of those, it or the 2011 version, then this is probably this is a good opportunity to do so without getting the UCS version. And then the cockpit piece, or cockpit area, which kind of brought some deja vu moments from one of the previous versions. But in the upper area, which has those newer pieces there, which is kind of interesting. And also, some enough seating to seat both Hansel. And Chewbacca on to there. Oh, and also, kind of quickly, is a little coffee mug and some sort of little lever for some reason. Not sure what for, probably for the hyperdrive or something. And with this 
in there. Oh, wait, need to sit Chewbacca back. There you go. But at least it is needed with one of the like plate pieces on like the Force Awakens versions and whatnot. But as for the shaping here, which is kind of different than the last couple versions with like a round piece rather than the like hexagonal one and the back part of which just about looks like it was just about like the 2000 like 2004 version and beyond like with the blue tubing to be the booster ring and, yeah. and also for the back area with those like little uh, dish things but are, which are all stickers of course and then also, like the Force Awakens version, is can open this up and then pull this out, and you can sit two different minifigs onto it. But what's different is that there's no lever pieces on this. Instead, it's just uh, these little things for some reason. And, and of course, this can spin freely. And now on the bottom is same. Is landing gear just about the same since 2004 version and same exact gun thing or pistol and printed piece as the top did. And let's see. I believe it's this sign that has the boarding ramp area. There we go. But it gets much. But you get much easy access when you look at the inside interior of it. As when seen on ground level, you can kind of get the gist of it. And now on to like the main feature of which, or I mean, one of the main features is with this the, uh, front area. Is like when you can take it off, and it's a little escape hatch, and you got a few jets in it, as well as from the sides and everything. And you can like flip it open, like on the Falcon itself, which I'll show in just a minute. And there's just enough space to fit a single mini jig into it, as long as they lie right down. And as you see, there's. Uh, Whoops. Little control panel there, and also a blue cylinder thing, like in the Malach's Landspeeder one, or no, no, Han's Landspeeder one. Uh, no, I forgot. And without it, it's kind of the same shaping as the other versions of the Millennium Falcon, but except a bit of asymmetricality to it. And, and on to the main feature, which is the opening up feature is this which on some technic pins just like the force awakens version and whatnot and also all the little flaps that open up and kind of tedious and fun so like the galls of my falcons that weren't the ucs version it's, it's like so but it's, you know it's kind of but not really circular and now i'll take the camera off and see inside so as you see, there's the like game board uh, and chairs and stuff, but except that they're in yellow for some reason. You know, I think that's where we're playing a game on. And there's another little control panel and another chair for it. And also a mini bar, a couple of cups and stuff for some drinks to do, where you can like, or Lando can sit at and have a drink on. And also a little bedding area, or as mentioned on some talk show, is a place for Lando to put all the cape, his capes on and stuff. And in this area is same ex is where the ramping area is. What I think they easily could have done is uh, do like a pullout feature that makes it go up and down and stuff, just like the 2004 version. And then over here is kind of the engine area with a little wrench hanging on there and so a couple more panel pieces and a couple of crates that are empty and whatnot, sitting on little jumper plates. So 
and you see a little odd assembly. It's probably to do with the main engine or hyperdrive thing. And you can, of course, oops, can place the mini figures in as many spaces as you want, or however you want. So like all the um, Falcon. But, it, but not much space, but kind of no place to like put Jubaka's gun onto. Unless, or, oh, that's just a second. And as you see, what those little clips are for, if you're wondering, is probably a good place to hold someone's ammunition onto. Of which, kind of a bit of good props to Lego for doing. Which props to Lego for doing that. I uh, can't remember, recall if that was in the last couple versions, but whatever. And to holding it up. Also annoying and fun. And now to get the escape patch. Whoops. Oh, sorry, technical difficulties. And there. And now, on to like, the final verdict. So my overall verdict is, I think this really cool set. The, that at least it's another Millennium Falcon, but about like, around $20 more than the Force Awakens version, but of course, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But at least it well improves with like the escape hatch and everything, and also a different color scheme, which to help stand out in your collections if you are if you already have the other Millennium Falcons. But if you're one wanting to get this one, but you you can really get it. Like add some diversity and whatnot, and also complete the first wave of solo sets. Like, get a good selection of minifigures, and playing features, and yeah. If you're looking to itch this set, or itching to get this set, then go ahead and get it. If you're looking to continue your collection of LEGO Star Wars solo sets, then go ahead and pick this up. And that's it with this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.